First of all, welcome to this first lecture for HPER 100, Concepts of Fitness and Wellness. I'm excited to begin this journey with you as we learn about all the concepts that help frame our health. In this first lecture, we're going to be looking at those common barriers, or maybe we should just call them excuses, that people use as reasons for not engaging in a healthy lifestyle. It's hard to understand why 60% of all Americans are not active, especially given what we know about the benefits of activity. Now, one of those causative agents is due to the advancement in technology that has simply made our lives easier. Your textbook begins this section by laying forward the 10 most common reasons adults cite for not adopting a physical, physically active lifestyle. Do you see yourself in this list? Potentially, the three more common reasons for college-age students lies in the area of time, motivation, and self-management. However, developing an understanding of these barriers can help us overcome them. Let's take a little more time to look at the publication, Promoting Physical Activity, a Guide for Community Action. This publication provides great suggestions for overcoming these common barriers. We're going to take a little bit of time to review the more common ones. Lack of time. The best way to overcome this barrier is to plan a special time during your day to exercise. In any given 24-hour period, Certainly, we can find three 30-minute slots to devote to exercise. Lack of motivation. No doubt this is perhaps one of the toughest barriers to overcome. One suggestion is to have an exercise buddy. Make an exercise commitment to each other and write it on your calendar. Sign a contract. Make that commitment. Lack of skill. Too many people simply believe that if they're not athletic, they cannot exercise. There are plenty of skills that anyone can do, such as walking, riding a bike, swimming, if you can swim, obviously. Or how about signing up for a fitness class to learn new skills? Family obligations. If you have young children, this can be challenging. But Choose to exercise when they're at school or they're napping, or better yet, make it a family affair and go for a walk as a family. Weather concerns. Living in North Dakota, this certainly is an issue that is a reality for us. But remember, there are many activities that are always available regardless of the weather. The key is to face your barriers head on. Do not just believe there's nothing you can do. Start slow and keep progressing. Now is the time to make physical activity a habit in your lifestyle. Let's take a look at a little video that talks about three of the typical excuses for not exercising. Everyone, Ali West here, AW Personal Training, and welcome to this week's newsletter. In this week's newsletter, we're going to be covering the three most common barriers to exercise and how we can overcome those barriers. So the first most common barrier, the one I hear time and time again from people, is time. People say they don't have enough time to do exercise, to do a workout, or to just go to the gym. So there's a couple of ways around this. One of the most um, useful ways I've found with my current clients to get around the time barrier is to make an organizational chart of your week. So you can... Plan that out however you want to, whether that's in a spreadsheet or whether you do a graph or a chart and just put everything you do in the week into each day and hourly block it out. And I'm sure once you've done that kind of chart, you will find gaps within your days and within your week to fit an exercise. So remember when you do this organizational chart to include family time, social time, working time, but I'm still sure within a long week you'll have enough hours spare to do some kind of workout. The second way you can get around the time barrier is to do time effective workouts. So I've spoke about this in previous videos but people um, sometimes think they have to go to the gym or do an exercise regime for 45 minutes to an hour when you can do a time effective workout within 20 minutes. So you could um, do an exercise plan or an exercise regime that's 20 minutes three to four times a week and then you're going to get sufficient exercise in throughout the week. So there's a couple of ways around the time barrier. 
So the second barrier I'm going to talk about is motivation. So a lot of people say, oh, I've got no motivation to do a workout, I've got no motivation to go to the gym, I've got no motivation to achieve my fitness goals. So there's a few ways around this as well, but one of the most common ways is to get an accountability buddy or get to someone that's going to hold you accountable to, to your exercise and to your results. So that, again, can be a friend or family member, or it could be someone like myself, a personal trainer or a fitness coach that's going to get you um, motivated and accountable towards your results. So that's uh, the way around uh, the motivation. Uh, another way you can do it is um, by recording what you're doing as well. So recording your exercise work workouts, your goals, your nutrition, and then once you start to see what you're doing and see the results that you're getting from that, then that will spur you on and motivate you to do more as well. So there's a couple of ways around the motivation barrier. The third and final one is um, tiredness. So a lot of people say, I'm too tired to exercise. So this again links in with the time one that we spoke about earlier in the video. And there's a, again, there's ways you can get around the tiredness. So the first one is exercise gives you energy. So you release endorphins when you exercise. So the more exercise you do, the more energy you're gonna have and the less tired you're gonna be. So it's kind of a bit of a cliche, that one. Um, and the second thing you can do is work out in the morning. So a lot of my clients come to see me first thing in the morning. I know a lot of people that like to do their exercise workouts in the morning as well, because you can get up, you can do that exercise, and then it's out of the way and you can carry on with your day, whether that's with your family, whether that's going to work, or whatever the case may be. So there's two ways you can get around tiredness. But again, if you organize your time, that tiredness can be taken out of the element and, and, and it can be a barrier that can be pushed away. So there's the three most common barriers, time, motivation, and being too tired. And if you use some of these tips that we spoke about in the video today, I'm sure you can overcome those barriers and push forward towards your fitness goals. So thanks for watching, and I will speak to you again next week. So in that video, the personal trainer talked about the issue of, issue of tiredness. And many times that's not an issue for college-aid students, but certainly for those of us as we're out of college and we're handling full-time jobs and families, that does become an issue. But as you notice in the video, exercising actually does give you more energy, and that, there's chemical reasons for that. It's because the endorphins are released into the bloodstream. So are you ready for exercise? You know, you may have made the commitment, but are you ready? This question is important because we must make sure that physical activity is safe for us. Therefore, it's important that all individuals complete a physical activity readiness questionnaire, or PARQ, before beginning any activity program. This questionnaire was developed by the British Columbia Ministry of, Education, of Health excuse me, and the Multidisciplinary Board on Exercise. And it's widely used and accepted as a method to evaluate readiness. However, if you are an older adult, you should still see your physician before engaging in any physical activity. The PARQ asks a variety of questions from your current medical reports. It asks about prescriptions, and it asks about your current lifestyle information. So, now it's time for you to begin this journey in examining and evaluating your own health and wellness. During this course, you'll be asked to evaluate a number of physical and wellness attributes, and you'll be asked to reflect not only on what you've learned, but what your next step should be to live a healthier lifestyle. There's no right or wrong answer to these reflections, but it is your opportunity to grow as a healthy individual. It's also important that you understand that these are graded activities and the reflections become your opportunity to show the instructor that you understand the content from both the lectures and the textbooks. The textbook, excuse me, so take advantage of that opportunity. So I look forward to discussing the next section with you as we move into section two of this chapter.